MC Hammer received one award after the other for this song. And the winner is... MC Hammer! MC Hammer! MC Hammer! Yeah, I like to thank God. It also secured a Grammy Award for Best R&B Song and a Grammy Award for Best Rap Solo Performance in 1991, a new category at the time, and the first rap song to be nominated for a Grammy Award for Record of the Year. MC Hammer did what no other rapper had done before him, which was that he made it to the pop charts. His incredible dancing also captivated the audience. But as they say, the higher you fly, the harder it is to fall. This is what happened with MC Hammer, as a few years after his career took off, he went bankrupt. So let's examine exactly why this happened. MC Hammer, whose real name is Stanley Kirk Burrell, was born on March 30th, 1962, in a very bad area of Oakland, California. Crime rate was very high there. Hammer had a passion for baseball, but he did not achieve success in sports. However, he did have his eyes on becoming an artist. He returned to his hometown and realized that he was in a bad financial state, and he wanted to do everything he could to change his situation. Like many of his friends, he chose the easiest path, which was to sell drugs. He then realized that this wasn't his thing, and he stopped it in time. What made me stop was my mother. I knew how hard she worked to provide for us as a single parent, and I, know, I knew that it would break her heart. He enlisted in the Navy, where he began writing songs with his friend. And a few years later, he created his own gospel group, the Holy Ghost Boys. Additionally, Hammer borrowed $20,000 each from former Oakland A's players Mike Davis and Dwayne Murphy to start an independent record label business. He traveled all over the West Coast, selling his debut album, Feel My Power, and the number of sales was astonishing, 60,000. He also went to various clubs and noticed one important detail, which was that random people liked the way he dances. Hammer realized that he could become famous for this. In that same club in Oakland, the Capitol Records executive director heard Hammer's music for the first time. The owner of the label company offered Hammer a deal, and it understandably seemed like this was an opportunity for fame but the ambitious Hammer responded with a no. Why? Because he already knew how much labels were earning from sales, so the company had to offer Hammer a deal that he couldn't refuse. Hit him! Hit him hard! Yeah! You know what you need, boy! In 1990, he released the banger, You Can't Touch This, and the album, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him. It's a day. But of course, let's focus on his most popular song, as we're interested in how this hit song came to be. I'm ready to take off, my brother was sitting in front of me, and I was just humming all, uh, super free. Boom, 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 boom. Then I said, my, I told my brother, you say the bass line, and I'm gonna say something else. So my brother went boom, 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 boom. I said, you can't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, we, I said, we get back, I'm gonna record that just like that. That's uh, how that happened. The music is based on Super Freak by Rick James. That song was a hit in 1981, so many younger listeners did not know the beat was sampled. In a strange irony, Hammer got a huge boost from MTV, who put the video in heavy rotation. In 1981, however, they refused to play Super Freak, as they didn't play videos by black artists with any regularity. Maybe if Rick James wore parachute pants and pulled off the Chinese typewriter dance move, he would have gotten some respect from the network. Indeed, the bright image of MC Hammer and his dances captured people. He was the first pop rapper artist in history. You want to continue to say what you is is pure rap and, and so forth. Okay, you, you have that. You can have that. You take the Chevrolet, I'll take the Mercedes. He's clean. I think he's the great inspiration for the young people. PG, I think. Positive rap. Put him on, put him on. 
Rick James tried to keep rappers from sampling his music, turning down any request. According to James, his lawyers authorized the Super Freak sample without his permission. He heard about it when a friend told him about You Can't Touch This, and the song came on the radio they were listening to in the car. James said he was irate, but somewhat appeased when he found out how much money it was making for him. Still, he claimed he wouldn't have done the deal if he was asked. And when did everything go downhill, you may ask? Everything changed when he decided to remove MC from his alias, believing that simply Hammer would be more marketable. It may have seemed like a small thing at the time, but one of Hammer's closest people, who was his hairdresser for 11 years, Diamond Ken, said it was after that that Hammer's business took a turn for the worse, as if everything that he had built over the course of several years was destroyed in an instant. This idea was not only supported by his colleagues, but also by his African-American fans, who called his music soft and the artist himself corrupt. His Saturday cartoon series was the final straw for fans. Hammer himself didn't understand what was happening. It seemed like the fans were actually okay with the music deals he was landing, but the various shooting and commercials and a cartoon were unacceptable for many. In general, they just stopped considering him one of them, roughly speaking. Also, many rappers dissed him. I mean, the man sold 10 million records. I'm not getting on Hammer, and I'm not gonna say he did sell 10 million records, but uh, Crack Fiends bought 10 million rocks. That don't mean Crack is good. <laughs> I was making his mail, but however, he's diluting rap. You know what I'm saying? He's making some. He's playing that Sambo role, and the reason everybody's buying his record is because he's no threat, and everybody want to see Sambo dance. <laughs> or the example of Ice Cube dissing the hero of our video. And even his album Too Legit to Quit, which sold five million copies, seemed like a failure to everyone. The negative attitude towards Hammer was a shock for the artist himself, but this was not actually the worst blow he suffered. After returning from tour, Hammer realized that his net worth, which was estimated at 30 million to 50 million at one point, had just collapsed. But regardless of that, he bought himself a house for 10 million dollars. He then went into debt, and the artist made a difficult decision to sell his dream house for 6 million, meaning it was at a loss worth 4 million. As Hammer himself said that if he were to turn back time, he would not have made such a crazy purchase. But this was not the end of it, because there was not only the purchase of an expensive house, there was also many questionable investments. His father and brother convinced Hammer to invest $1 million in horses. Later on, he purchased many luxury cars, going as many as 17 cars. Ultimately, Hammer's generosity caused financial problems. He said he wanted to help many friends. I made sure that all my inner circle cats, I bought them five suits apiece. Mm. So they suited every day. So you can make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't make people. And as it often happens in our lives, as money ends, so do friendships. And only in these tough times can someone truly differentiate their true friends from the fakers. This is exactly what happened with Hammer. And then when the money start leaving, then that's how you can tell, you know, who your friends are. When you're dealing with lots of money, you're dealing with a lot of people. And when you deal with a lot of people, you're dealing with a lot of personalities and you don't know uh, who's who. Hammer decided to make a comeback to the top spots with an image change. He became a gangster and released an album in 1994 called The Funky Headhunter. You know, I'm not singing my lyrics, I'm rapping. Uh, but in every other aspect, the answer is no, I'm not a rap. You take the Chevrolet, I'll take the Mercedes. It was clear that such a reincarnation did not lead to anything. Fans had realized that gangster rap had become the main movement of hip hop, and MC Hammer just wanted to capitalize off of it. And at that time, a rapper's authenticity was one of the main required qualities, which Hammer, quite frankly, did not have. People simply did not take the artist seriously, and it looked quite silly. After all, how could the positive and flashy MC Hammer of the 90s, after some time, begin to rap about the streets and gangster movements? It was an obvious failure. He did not despair, though, and in 1995, he again released an album, 
this time inside out. However, it was once again a failure. Hammer's last hope was Death Row Records. He signed a contract with them but only remained there for a year without releasing anything. After Tupac's death, some songs with Hammer were released. Here's one of them. Sona Sing, Dress GQ, peeping out these industry feats wearing dresses you can see through, Hammer Time. As of 1996, he was 13 million in debt, and a year later, his music hit rock bottom. After great success in 1990, Hammer declared that he was bankrupt. Although he later said that this was not exactly true. That in itself was not true, as there were supporting documents proving that he owed his acquaintances about $4 million. He even returned to the pseudonym MC, but it was already too late. He started making music for believers and about family values. As of now, his last album was released in 2009, Dance Jam the Music. All I had to do was swallow my pride, open up my heart, hold you, apologize, and give back love like you gave him. Another interesting thing that happened to him was when Jay-Z said this in one of his songs. Hammer went broke, so you know I'm more focused. I lost 30 mil, so I spent another 30. Cause unlike Obviously, Hammer didn't like that, and he released his own diss. Mr. Devil, can you give me a sign? He said, Throw the rock up, that's one of mine. At the end of 2012, Hammer appeared at the 40th American Music Awards. He performed with Psy, dancing to a mashup of Gangnam Style and Too Legit to Quit. Over the past 20 years, MC Hammer has been involved in films, was releasing music, opened his own martial arts school, and at the same time, continues to perform on stage, performing his hit songs. At the moment, his fortune is estimated at about 1.5 million. Either way, MC Hammer left a huge legacy in the music industry, and his hit will live on forever. The next video I want to recommend is the story of Lil' Kim. 